Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5. If you there, you say, Let's read. Bible says, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. It's an error that proceedeth from the ruler. Let's follow. Next. Folly is set in great dignity. See a foolish guy put in a very dignified place. That's what they mean. And the rich sit in low places. Next verse. He says, I have seen servants upon one, horses and princes walking as servants upon Let's go back to verse 6. Message version. It says, Immaturity is given a place of prominence, while maturity is made to take a back seat. Next verse. He said, I've seen and province upstarts riding in style. While experienced veterans are put out to pasture. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Unexperienced veterans are what? They are put out to pasture. Tell your neighbor it is evil. Tell your neighbor it is so evil. How can a priest walk? While servants are riding on one. Horses. How can a fool be honored? And then a wise man is what? He's without dignity. But he said that this error proceeds out of a ruler. This, this problem is with a man who has the anointing and glory to rule. Not out of a man who doesn't rule. This is not caused by a man who can't rule. This is caused by a man who can rule. This error proceeded out of a ruler. Not out of a normal person. Not out of a novice. Not out of a servant. It proceeded out of what? A ruler. That means you are entirely responsible of what proceeds out of your life. Why? Because you are a ruler. The Lord has given you charge to establish your life by the word. He says, and this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. And he says, and thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou might observe to do that which is written for them. Thou shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. He says, and then shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. And I was telling Christians over the weekend that when you read that portion of scripture, you realize the book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. That is an order. Thou shall meditate day in and night that thou may observe. When he says thou shall meditate, that's also a what? An order. But when you read that third part, that third part where he says, for then thou shalt, no, no, no. That thou may observe to do. That's not a command. You get it? That's a result of the first two commands. 
if you meditate on this word and speak it in your life, he will just observe to do. That thou may observe to do. That thou may observe. It's automatic for you to do what you speak and think. You get where I'm coming from? It's so automatic for you to what? To do what you think and speak. Let this word not depart out of your heart, your mouth. And he says, meditate therein, day and night, that thou may observe, that you may observe to do, that you may do it. That means there is a spiritual principle that governs every man who thinks and speaks the word. There is something that will cause you to do. So the part of you making lame men walk is, is don't even question how. Just speak this word and meditate therein day and night. Go to your bed and think raising a dead man. Change your bed, the other part and just think change, raising a dead, dead man. Go to the bathroom thinking raising a dead man. Come out of the bathroom thinking raising a dead man. Go to classroom thinking raising a dead man. He says, and then that you may observe, that you may observe to do. It's automatic. He didn't say, and that you should observe. He said, that thou may observe to do. The word observation there is perception. That you will perceive to do. That you will see how to do it. That you will get the ability by the Spirit to do it. Ah. He says, wait, listen. If this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Okay? And he says, that thou, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. He says, comma, that thou may observe to do. That you may observe to do. That you may observe to do according as it is written. What you speak every day and what you speak every day, you will automatically do without any pushing. Prevenient grace. Prevenient grace is the grace of God that works with a critical faculty in a human being to cause him to do something that was not even wired to do. Why? Maybe you didn't even have the human understanding to do. But this grace will always cause you to a certain place. For the miraculous. For the miraculous. When as a campus there's a young lady I, I, I tried to preach to. She was so Catholic to get born again. So I preached and preached and preached and preached and preached until she could not. And then the Spirit of the Lord told me, just hold, wait. It's one of those conferences. Pastor Isaiah comes, preaches, she gets slain for like two hours. The Spirit of the Lord tells me, go lay hands on her and speak in other tongues. And while I was speaking, yeah, she was slain, you understand, like, like a dead person, you know, face down. Shoes were in different places, you know, that kind of power. So while she's down and her face is down, I remember I go on her and the Lord tells me, pray in tongues, I start to read about her. You understand? And while I'm praying, in my spirit, I'm meditating, get born again, you woman, you're wasting time. Get born again. But you see, I, I cannot speak to her something She's already in a dead format. You understand? So I'm still After 15 minutes, the Holy Ghost told me, Stand, walk away. So I walk away. And then we go to the hostel in the evening. She comes to my door. I want to speak to you. I open. Have a seat, Jackie. What's up? Lead me into a confession prayer. <laughs> I ask her, what, 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 what happened? How, how, how? She said, You see, when I was down, you came in the spirit and preached to me the gospel. When I woke up, I didn't need any Do you understand where I'm coming from? Anything that is spoken and meditated will observe to execute. There will be a spiritual power. There will be a prevenient grace. Critical faculty. That thing that works with God's time just to make sure it produces the required result in the time of Almighty. So, what do you want? What, are you, what do you want to do? Simple. Speak it, think it. Speak it, think it. I spoke and thought La Bonita when I was in second year. And I finished it in second year. Now, you don't want to know what I thought and spoke in third year. <laughs> you don't even want to know what I'm thinking now. Robo, bo, 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 salara, man, de lebros. Why? Because I'm thinking, I'm speaking, I'm thinking, I'm speaking. And the next thing I know, observe to do. Why? Because the spirit at that particular point just wants to give you the house. 
that you may observe to do. Because we learn by perception. I do as I see my father do. Of course, there are no lame men walking, lame men walking in heaven. So Jesus is not saying that he gets into an experience of going to heaven and sees how the father makes the lame men walk. No, 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 no. He only says that there is a certain way by which the father teaches. And it's only by meditation and speaking forth the oracles. He says that thou may make your way prosperous and have good success. You make your way. Not your pastor. You make your way. Not even God. No, no, listen. The moment you can meditate on this word and speak it, I will not be responsible for how much money you have on your account. <laughs> I will not be responsible for how much peace that surpasses all understanding. I will not be responsible if you feel this or if you change that. It's up to you. You flatten your ground. Draw your vision. For well, example, who said, you know, sometimes in this life, God might not want you to go certain places. Let your will be done. But the scripture says, let your will be done. On earth, coma, coma, as is in heaven. Do we have blind eyes in heaven? So you're actually telling God, open blind eyes. I know, but some of you think it different. He said, let your will be done, God. Maybe it's not the will of God. <laughs> he said, you will make. He gave you. He sent his word. That's why the next verse in Ecclesiastes, verse 8, 10, verse 8, let's read what he says. He says, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh and hates shall the serpent bite. You're responsible for your heads and digging the pit. Not your man of God. Not that guy. No. You're responsible for the pit you're in. If you see any testimony of being beaten by a serpent anywhere, you're responsible entirely. Not Apostle Grace or Pastor Zach. Nada. It's you. Maturity take responsibility. There must be an error with the ruler. Tell your neighbor there must be an error with the ruler. Tell your neighbor there must be an error with the ruler. You see, let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Let me share something about the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in Luke 13, I think about the 15th verse, He says, you hypocrites. He's he's speaking to religious people because he knows the spirit of religion. Of course, he was narrating a story of a woman who had been in bondage for 18 years. You understand? And Jesus healed her. The moment Jesus healed her, what was the first experience? She suffered. Whether you're sick or you're not sick, it is what? Sabbath. You're not supposed to be healing on what? Sabbath. That was the problem with the religious guy. You understand where I'm coming from? And then he asks them, 15, The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the store and lead him away to water. Now, some of you must understand that the figurative line of water sometimes represents the word of the Holy Spirit. God actually means animals are let go only for watering. You are delivered only to access the Spirit. Am I making some sense? And by the understand me now, because I'm a bit going to get complicated in a few minutes. An animal can only be loosed to go to the spirit. You can only be delivered from that demon of your uncle for you to function freely in the Holy Ghost. Not for you to fall into another trap of bondage. But have you looked at Christians who are in and out? They are in and out. They, they are shaking, they are vibrating every day. You understand? But nothing comes out of them. 
Why? Because they come out of one thing to enter another. They come out of one thing and enter another. They come out of one problem and enter another problem. They come out of one issue and enter another issue. Why are you really losing to the water? Oh, there's a definition of deliverance that you have and there's not circumspect with the word of God. There's no correlation. When will the Christian with the spirit ever be free? What's the essence of the Holy Spirit in you? Now, look at the wisdom of old. Okay? First Samuel chapter 10. Eh? I think from the about the fifth verse. Seventh verse. Okay? He tells the man, and let it be, uh -uh, let's begin with the sixth verse, and the Spirit of the Lord shall what? Will come upon you. Look at this. Will come upon. Eh? Will come upon. Not will dwell in. Are you hearing me? He's telling a man who cannot have the Holy Spirit in him. He's telling a man who can by chance get the Holy Spirit on him. You get it? Because we're dealing with an Old Testament dispensation. The Bible says that the first Adam was of the Afafi. He was a natural man. And he says, how be it that the first was natural and the second was spiritual? That means there was nothing spiritual about the first Adam except that which came on him. You get it? He didn't have something in him. He had something on him. That's why by the prophet of Ezekiel, he says, I shall put my spirit in them. Because they were living souls. The first Adam was of the earth earthy, and the second man was is of heaven. 48, what does it say? And as is the earthy, such are they who are also what? Earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they who are also heavenly. That means he's saying there is a heavenly people. Like there is an earthly people. He's not talking only about the angelic hosts. No, no, no. He is talking of a certain line that came in after the first Adam. He's talking of a certain DNA that is spiritual, above natural. It's not natural above spiritual. They don't call upon the Holy Spirit when they are in problems. No. They carry the Holy Spirit before the problems come. Ah. I'm not talking about that kind of anointing that was like on Saul. Eh? The anointing falls on him. Bam! And the Bible says, and you shall prophesy. He's not a prophet, but he's prophesying among the prophets. Are you hearing? We're talking of something that is indwelling. It's indwelling. What came on Samuel is in you. 24-7. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. What mantles a man and he becomes another man? <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me preach to these guys because they understand. What mantled a man and he became another man is inside you. 24-7. 365 days a year. Rabala kalaba sakataraba. That means you don't turn into other men. You're another man. Oh, holy master. He says you're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're in that co place, but you're not of that workplace. You're in the taxi park, sitting in a taxi, but you're not. Ya rabba kasele broster. He says, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Huh? And he says, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shall be turned into another man. You see where I'm coming from? Next verse. And he says, and let it be when these signs are come. When you read the word there for signs, is those, those, those marks, those that testimony. The moment you feel like the Holy Ghost is upon you. He told him, that thou do as occasion serve your pastor. As occasion serves me as Jehovah God. He says that thou might do as occasion serve thee. For God is with him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Over who can I explain? He says the moment this thing comes upon you, he's talking to Samuel, not you. Are you? It is in you. He says you shall turn into a what? Another man. And he says, you shall prophesy with them. And he says, the moment these the signs come, and then you, tell, you can feel that this thing has settled on you. He told him, serve your occasion. I'm driving on Ginger Road and I, want, I don't want a hump there. 
You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. I have 10,000 shillings in my bag and I want a million shillings. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. My, my hair is growing too old. I want a new piece of hair. He says when the Spirit shall come on you, He says you shall serve your occasion. Why? Because at that particular point, I am with you. I've led you to the water. Drink as much as you want. Just drink as much. Ho. Oh. And then that same spirit goes to God and says, God, if you can only give me two shots. Only two shots. My spirit shall be satisfied. He asked the God, a certain man of God came and, and, and he told me, can I tell you, man of God, if the Lord gives me only 300,000, only three, I can change my life. In my heart, I said, I swear, he won't give it to you. God is not stupid. Look at this man who is to lend to nations, asking for 300,000. That's why they should refuse to give you when you start borrowing. Why? Come on, ask for nations! Do you get where I'm coming from? So now, he's giving an experience of a man to whom the Spirit could come upon. And he tells him the secret of this thing upon you is to serve the occasion. I can only lead you where I can fully provide for you. He is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me. He is the one that eats green pasture. That's what makes him the shepherd. He leads it. For as many as I led, you can't be led and be broke. You can't. There's no correlation there. You can't be led and be funny. You cannot be led by the Holy Ghost. And you lack. There's a kind of religion in some people. One time I was in a meeting and a woman said, and the Lord put disease on me. Why? Because I refused to serve him. Hey, hey, you talk. He's casting me. I also said, no, I will not preach. She was even boasting of fighting God. And then she said, until I said, okay, 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 God, I surrender. Then she gave an experience of Jacob. She said, Jacob fought with God. You see, the name Jacob is translated as trickster, movie. You're not a trickster. In the Bible says, for the, as many as believed on him, he gave them the right. We no longer wrestle with God. But some people in overnight, took Ruana Nemukama, Ruana, Ruana, Molokole Ruana Nemukama, Ruana, Ruana, and then you see sisters, even her hair gets out of length. Why? She's fighting with God. She's fighting with. Bible Yakoma, Ruana Nemukama, and Akolati. Oh Lord Jesus. The dear guy fighting, and then later claims, but no one's passion against Israel shall prosper. I am Israel. Now, if you're Israel and your name is already changed, what business do you have going back limping? That's why those Christians go back like this. Why? Because Jacob went back that way. They have God, but they are broke. They have God, but they are they are funny, they are weak, they are beggarly. They don't have anything on them. They fought God and they started leaping. Their ministries are, their education, their marriage, their businesses, they are all like this. The Bible says you are coming to Zion, the city of God, to the company of innumerable angels, to the spirits of just men made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, whose blood speaketh better things from the blood of Cain and Abel. That's where you are. So when, when the dear Christian comes and wants to wrestle, the Lord tells him, Take ye of my yoke. <laughs> it is light. <laughs> Mine is lighter. You, you have a heavy yoke. You take, you just take off mine. Mine is light. Why? Because my nature, listen, 
This, this is the guy who will find storms and you think he's going to fight through. He has a wife, one the guy he used to come to the bank where I used to work, KCB one day. day. And he would come and say, Chiba, Maze wiki pika, tuan, 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 tuan. And I see him, Muruana, going on. Now, Kubo, Kubo, Mlavi, 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 Kubo, if you don't understand English, it means the devil is beating him, he's beating him, and they're beating each other. You understand? So he's on the prayer mount and then he says, Even his voice is dead. Then after a few minutes he says, Kati, Usumba. In your car, who can transport <laughs> that man has not seen God? I swear, he has not seen God. There is an error with the ruler. Tell your neighbor, there is an error with the ruler. Princes ride, I mean, servants ride on horses, and the prince is walking. And you see preeminence with the immature and the mature backstage. The guy who is deep, he can't have a pulpit. The simplest preacher has the biggest pulpit. He says the error is with the ruler. It's your problem. It's your problem. That's why I tell men of God, don't make other men of God your business. It's your problem that your ministry is not growing. Not with a carrot. There is a carrot. Carrot. They have carrots. There is a carrot. They, listen. It's not. Listen. People are not your business. It's your problem. Musumbandari can be into kuche kwechi into choriko. So I'm going to go to kwechi into ateje kwechi into chenye. It's my family. My, when I look at my, my family, everything. <laughs> You're the light of the world. You're a city set on what? On a hill. You cannot be hid. It's your problem. The ruler has an error. You see, let me tell you something about the, let me tell you something about a man of the spirit. Huh? He will have successes. Successes. If you're writing this, writing. A man of the spirit will have successes enough by the spirit that he won't even need to testify about them. Not because they are not big, but because they are too normal for his spirit. The man of the spirit, I hear me, will reject the successes. But he will get to a point where he will not even want to talk about the successes. Not because they are not good. But because they are so him, they are so his nature. He's still used. Let me give you an example of the generation we live. You remember that portion of scripture I've just spoken about in the look, the look book? If Jesus was saying, You hypocrite, you remember that portion of scripture? Let me show you how our people think. 15. Uh -huh. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and leave him away for watering? Next verse. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosened from this bond on the Sabbath, on this, from this bond on this Sabbath day? Next verse. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. The generation of today eh? first skips the miracle and says, How did he know that they were 18 years? You see how they think? Eh? Even that fascinates them. It's like, I'll give you an example. I'm past, and you should be, I'm past speaking what I see and hope I'm true. Or even give provision to prove I'm true. Is it true? You tell. I don't. You don't. Listen. I, I am so true. 
I wish they pray for it with you. Remember that time, even last Monday, last Thursday when I was preaching, right? I testified of people who were healed from different places. All those people have testified this last week. But I don't need to believe God and say, I am so sure I have a dead and true. Now, let's go past the elementary. Let's delve into the deepness of God. Let's understand God. God's point here was not whether it was true. Oh, 18 years, how did you know? How does the Holy Spirit speak to you? That's not even Jesus' business at that point. Jesus' business is a daughter or daughter of Abraham has an issue. And it must be sorted. You get it? But when you start to walk in these liberties, and you start to serve your occasion for so long, I'll tell you, there are many things that sometimes are not necessary to say. Not because you don't want to say them, but they are better either if people see them, because they might divert you from the bigger picture. They might divert, divert you. Look at, look at David. David kills bears, he kills lions. He never spoke anything. He killed a lion. It's dead. And he comes back home and says, The brothers don't even know this guy has ever killed a lion. Name for you. Can you believe I thought about Michael and he came before you did that? <laughs> because you live in a world where a lot of things are unbelievable. Welcome to our world. Where it is too normal to think of Michael and he comes that you get too tired of knowing Michael is coming. That you get, let I tell people, me if I was to tell you the things I know every day, I would either bore you or get bored because they are so spontaneous. The point where even my phone going to call, I know it's going to call. Now I, it's something I cannot say. Can you believe? I, I, God wants you above that life. He wants you to get to a point where you're too used to the things of the spirit. Hmm? That even if a car came to knock you, and then you went up, and then it passed, and then the Lord landed you, you just move. It's normal. No, no, it's just normal. It's just normal. It's just normal. There's a guy, I don't know whether you meet him or not. He's a church member here. He, he came to my office and told me he was going to visit his sister. And out of the blue, he just remembers reaching in the middle of the road. And poof, he just hears a voice. Dah. And he wakes up after a few minutes. And people say, he's going to die. He's going to die. Let's take him to the hospital. This is not right. He just busted himself and stood up and looked at the people. And they tell him, you're a young man. You're so hot. You're so hard. We saw how the car hit you. Let us put you in the car and take you to hospital. Just told him, I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. And he's so blood in his ears. I have the life of God in me. But some people, the moment they can't see the woo 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 woo, and they hear in hospital. No, no. No! No! That's not your story. He just dusted himself and went to finish his business. Yet he blacked out. Some of you already victimized the moment they put a candle on your hand. I am sick. Pastor, I am sick. That's not who you are. Tell your neighbor that's not who you are. And let me tell you something. There is a maturity when certain successes are not celebrated in public. Except if occasion demands. It's called maturity. Except if occasion demands. Except if occasion demands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's a portion of scripture in the book of Judges. I think it's in the 14th chapter. Where the Bible says they went, I think, to Timos to get Samson a wife. And he loved a Philistine woman. The parents tell him, boss, 
Can you look into your own sisters? Your relatives, I mean, sorry, I mean from the very tribe. Not like sister blood, but. Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thine brethren? He says, Oh, among all my people, that thou mayest go to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines. And Samson said in his father, into his, unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me. She what? She doesn't like her. She's Philistine, eh? What? I like her. You get it? Now, the next verse says, For the parents, but his father and mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion. You see how the zeal of God is. God is too zealous that he will put a guy to have a certain feeling. You know, Samuel, Samson, Samson was born with a feeling to avenge. He, he, he had a certain anger to avenge the life of the Israelites who was ruled by another spirit. That's how serious, let me tell you, every other day, God becomes more zealous than he was. I don't know why. He's like that. Remember that person of scripture where he says that whoever shall touch Cain shall be punished seven times. By the time he gets to the generation of Lamech, he says, for if he avenges the life of Cain seven times, he shall avenge the life of Lamech seventy times. As in, just a few generations down the road, he has even multiplied times ten. How much vengeance he would show a man who touches Lamech. Now you. Oh, now you. I promise you sleep. Sleep. That's why the concept of true forgiveness is seven times seventy. Lamex and ah. and Cain's vengeance. Both he that wronged God and he that is a favor of God. Ah. Well, that's the deal. Anyway, that's for another day. But the Bible says that the father and mother did not know. Now, this is what the Lord placed in, Sam, in Samson. He placed something in his life. Something in his life that had it a certain thing over against it's just against them. He's seeking for just one occasion to prove to them who he is. Now, when, when you read the word, therefore, she pleases me, it was just deeper than her being attractive. Samson needed a point of contact to attack the Philistine. He just needed a point of contact. He just needed a point of what? Contact. don't understand. You see, the life of Samson is just deeper than what the only mistake he did. Let me tell you. Samson, according to the scripture, he was supposed to marry a Philistine. He was supposed to marry a Philistine. The only problem was that he married an indifferent Philistine. That's the only difference. Because Delilah is translated as feeble, weak. A virtuous woman, the Bible says, shall do her husband good all the days of her life. She has no need for spoil. You get it? But because there was some virtue not in Delilah, it was even deeper than just Philistine spirit. There was something about her. Delilah was feeble. And if you want to know the weakness of a woman, is the woman who never does her husband good all her days or can contradict her husband because of anything outside the circle of marriage. I know why some of you won't say amen. But that's what makes you feeble. You don't do him good, you don't profit. Him. If Samson had married the stronger woman, even if she was Philistine, 
she would have plotted out a way to take him to those pillars without losing his eyes. Because you see, the secret here, let me tell you, the secret, well, where am I even going there? I was not even planning to, can I go there? The, the, listen, the secret here was, she had a place in the spirit of Samson, the heart of Samson, that nobody had. Even the deepest man in the world, his wife has something in his heart that nobody can access. I mean, there was a time when he brings a riddle. You remember the time he brings a riddle? He slots the riddle and he gives them seven days to solve it. And none of them can. Until they realize, hey, hey, they go to the wife. And tell her, help us and entreat that guy. There is a way you can plead with him. The Bible says she cried until Samson told her the truth. Then she went and told them. He told them, if you had not plowed my hay, you would not have known. If you had not plowed my hay, as if there are those things he knows can only come out from the wife. They, they can't come out from anything. There are certain things that can afflict a man of God and they can only come from the wife. They can't come from anywhere. Yeah. So she better not be what? Feeble. She better not be what? Feeble. This is not. This is what? Not. The woman better not be feeble. She better not be feeble. At least let, let me tell you, he was already feeble. Samson. You know, some of you women must understand, men are already feeble in a certain way. They have a certain degree of feebleness. <laughs> he refused to tell the whole group the mystery. And this guy just goes, oh, help me. Okay, 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 don't cry, baby. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. How can you fail in marriage? How can your husband give you headache? Yes, <laughs> And all the women said. <laughs> okay, you see, but but the prophecy, eh? But the, the mist behind the, the riddle. The mystery behind the riddle, you understand, was the summary of Samson's life. Period. Why? Because before that, he had killed a lion. You get it? Then, somehow later, he finds the carcass, and that's from where he gets the what? The honey that the bees had made, and then he went and fed what? But this very lion had come to what? To attack him. So that which seeks to attack him, he killed. Can you go to that people? And the Bible says, and Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. He says, if you can certainly declare it with, it, it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then will I give you thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. Next verse. He says, but if you cannot declare it, then shall you give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And then, you, and then he said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. They say, listen, they say, out of the eater, that's the lion, came forth meat. That's the one. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. I killed a lion. You understand? It came out meat. The meat became carcass. And the carcass produced a certain kind of honey with the bees. And that honey became what? Sweetness. It fed. You get what I'm trying to tell you? And they could not in three days expound the riddles. Samson's story was not supposed to end in that way of death, if you read that riddle. He was not supposed to die that way, if you understand the riddle. The lion was not supposed to come back to devour him. It wasn't. 
the end of the story was to kill it and it gets forth sweetness. And that sweetness which is honey. And he says in the Leviticus, I shall lead you to a land that flows with milk and honey. But he knows that the milk is without cows or peas. And the honey is promised land at a place where Israel is above and delivered from the bondage of the Philistine. But they knew it not. Delilah was not supposed to be the match for Samson. But either way he was supposed to marry a Philistine woman. But anyway, that's not where I was going. Let's go back to that part. First verse 5, I think. The Bible says, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother too. Timnath and came to the vineyard of Timnath and behold a young lion roared against him. He just yeah? <laughs> the, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. <laughs> and the Bible says and he had nothing in his hand. You know, until you have nothing. He, he tore the lion until he had nothing. You understand where I'm coming from? And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he has done. It, it wasn't a miracle. And that's why I pray that they start to discover the things you're doing. And you've not told them. You get on to tell you. It's better that way. It's better when you've not said anything. But then they start to hear rumors. Your son, he owns the biggest building in Kampala. Are you serious? To you! To you! You understand? I, I pray they just discover your blessing. I pray they just find out you are richer than they thought. I pray they first find out you were smarter than they thought. I pray they just discover you were bigger than they thought. Don't go about telling every success of the spirit. Except if occasion serves. If it's going to help someone, do it. But if it's not going to help someone, Don't show everyone who you are and what you know. Just wait. Let them just discover you were deeper than they thought. Let them just discover you were richer than they thought. Let them just discover that you were more <laughs> you were you were you were, you multiplied than they thought. You 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 had certain things than they thought you did. It's better when they just discover. Because they'll fear you the more. Why? You'll become unpredictable. They won't know how much more you have. And it's wonderful when men start to look at you when they don't know how much you have. You're just there. But, but they, they already have something that scares them. You understand? You, you raise the dead man and move like it was okay. You, you understand? Don't, don't show us okay. No, 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 no. Act like it is so normal. And then carry on. Why? Because it's a life. Tell your neighbor, it's a life. It's a life. Now, listen to this. So you're at the point where now the Spirit of God has told you. The moment he fell on a man in the Old Testament dispensation, he could serve his occasion. Now he dwells in the inside of your spirit. We don't even have any more a time frame of when the Spirit should come on you. He's inside you every day. That means every day you wake up in the morning, you're serving your occasion. Every morning, you're determining how much you want to eat, how much you want to occupy, how much. You see, God, God, God has a certain mind to work with a man in a place that other people cannot interpret. And let me try to explain that place. The first dimensions of the spirit. Are to just entertain kind of men. You get it? For example, you can say from about the second dimension, that's when Jesus started to do miracles in the second dimension. When he was in the first all of the 30 years he spent on life, you don't hear one miracle. That is the Son of God waxing. Great in wisdom and stature. He's wise. He gets in the council and then he starts to debate with guys. You get he can debate, but if they bring a lame man, it's at that in that level he can't. You get it? Then the Bible says he's led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. 
he spends an experience of the temptations. But the mysteries of temptations in the mind of God is just deeper than just turn these stones into bread. Because the scripture says that the stone is heavy and the stone represents the law. Bread represents the word. He says, for I am the bread of life. He's telling Jesus, take your testimony and switch it from the grace and preach the law. Turn these stones into bread. Let it be what you feed men. Feed them with stony bread. Feed them with bread from stone. And Jesus tells the man, that's an incomplete, it's an incomplete revelation. That's half of the scripture. That's only Old Testament. Get to the new. Man shall not live by bread alone, that kind, but by every finish, first and second, the first testament and the second testament, the old and the new. Why? That proceeds. Understand the mystery from the beginning to the end. So he gets the qualification of a man approved in doctrine. But some people see the devil just told him stone bread. No, no, it wasn't just a normal sort of use stone and bread. There was a deeper connotation. There was a deeper meaning to this. When he goes led by the Holy Ghost in the wilderness, he comes back, the Bible says, in the power of the Holy Ghost. First thing he goes to. And he says, the Spirit of the Lord is. For he has anointed me to what? I wish some of you understand the mystery. Do you remember that it was look what? Look for. Praise the Lord. Let me show you something. But he was quoting what? Isaiah what? Huh? 61. Let me show you something. Let's first go to that Isaiah 61. I want to show you God's message. Tell your neighbor, he wants to show you us God's message. You can. Isaiah 61, which verse is it? He says, the spirit of the Lord is, huh? because he has anointed me to preach good news and to the what the meek, he has set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim Liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that more. In Zion. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Then you see how he said it. The, the Spirit of the Lord, look at where he, he, he came full of the Holy Ghost. Are we still on the same plane? Is it so that that was an experience after he came from the wilderness? He, he, he understood that devil wanted him to preach the law. To turn stones into bread. To turn stone. Because reason, the ten commandments were written on tablets of stone. And when you commit adultery, the very stone does what? Beats you. So he tells him, turn the law into your message. The Bible says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. So, the first time he comes in the power of the Holy Spirit, he stands before them in the council, I mean before the church, okay, the, 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 the synagogue for example, and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and, to, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, next verse, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, what is the next line in Isaiah? And the day of vengeance. What, what's the next slide there? In verse 20. Not that he didn't know there was a day of vengeance. He says, I didn't come to preach vengeance. <laughs> I came to preach the acceptable year. Yeah. You're acceptable in the name of Jesus. You have access to everything that you need. You can do all things by Christ who strengthens you. Divine access. He closed the book. Because his business was not the day of vengeance. It has people to whom it belongs. Not you. He says he shall condemn the world of sin because it believed not 
from the Lord Jesus. Did you believe? Your pastor dealt vengeance. Your pastor dealt vengeance in the name of Jesus. Are we together? What does the next verse say? Let's go back to Luke. He closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fasted. Next verse. And he began to say unto them this day, This scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. After being filled by the Holy Ghost, coming in the power of the Holy Ghost, he didn't tell them it's going to be fulfilled today. The moment I came in the power of the Holy Ghost, I can only preach what's acceptable. Next verse. And all that bear him witness and wonder at the gracious words. Gracious. Not legal. <laughs> Pastor Zach, gracious words. Which proceedeth out of his mouth. And they say, that's the, that's the beginning, that's the testimony of the, of the man coming out of the first dimension into the second. Is this not a son of Joseph? I said, they start to relate with who produced you, where you come from, who is related to you, and they start to see something different. Then you know you're in another dimension. But if you still put on glasses like your uncle, if you're still asthmatic like your auntie, brother, you're still in the first dimension. Get out of there! There is something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there is something that can get on you, and your father even doubts you and says, "Ah, on a single nazala, tayokera wati, tasaba wati, takiri zawati, tata, this is not my child." The moment your biological father says, "You're not my daughter, girl, woman," why? Because there is something on you that is bigger than you, that is bigger than your father, that is bigger than your grandfather, something your great grand. what the Lord is doing in your life. That is what he's going to do in your life. He's going to do something that will make people ask, Then you tell them, no. This thing wants to separate you from anything that your father had. If you drove a Benz, they will expect that the son of Mutiaba will drive a Benz. But he wants to give you something bigger than a Benz. That they will say, is this Mutiaba's son? That's why I'm telling you at the sound of my voice, for every man hearing my voice, you must be richer than your father. You must drive a better car than your father. You must go further than your mother. You must do better than your grandfather. Ah! Princes ride on horses, not servants. The heir is with the ruler. Push your game right. Put your game right. Is there any parent here? Any parent that wants to be richer than their child? Why do you think God wants? If you have three parents, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? If, if you sat on that bed because your child was sick and even forgot to bathe. One time, one time somebody sent us a chicken, a, 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 a chicken, a mother, a mother, a mother chicken. Mother hen. A mother hen. So this thing laid eggs, eh? You understand? Then 
hatched into chicks and then chicks started to play around home. Then one day my young sister Maureen came. If she's here, I'm sorry. She came and just wanted to tamper with one of the chicks. My God. Mother Hen came with all this speed. The next thing I know, I'm hearing, ah, we got it. The thing fought her. She left it, continued following her. As it did not it's small, but you touched its cheeks. Oh, but its brain is this size. Its brain is this size. Its brain is this size. It can't even know how to write its name. How much more your heavenly father? But you worry they will kill you. How? Tell your neighbor, Petera Tuta, Tera Tuba, Tera Tulemesa, Tera Tuanisa, Tera Tuiza. He says, He neither sleeps nor slumber. 24 7 is like the surveillance. On who? Grace Rubega. The Bible says he keepeth him and the wicked one toucheth him not. Listen, God doesn't want to deliver you from HIV. He wants to keep it far away from you. He doesn't want to deliver you from cancer when you're sick. He wants to keep cancer far away from you. Far away from you! So I was saying when kids are in the first dimension, there's an excitement. Of the things that Christ does. Okay? That's why John says these things were written so that you might believe. Just all of those miracles you see in the whole gospels that you've read, they are just one thing to make you believe. Now the child of God can't ask themselves, uh huh, after believing. Uh uh. He made a lame man walk for you to believe that lame men walk. Now that you believe, lame men walk. When Jesus saw your day, he said, The things that I have done, you shall do. Come on. Greater what shall you do? Because I've given you a sample. Yet the Bible says that the things that were written by but were done by Jesus, if they were to be written, they would fill the earth. He said you do more. Do you know the meaning? That means the thing that you're supposed to do or you're doing is going to have effect in Mars, Luna, Jupiter, the whole galaxy. The stars are going to sing your name. How can you die when no book has been written about you? No book. Listen, if you are destined to die next week, I delay your death. In the name of Jesus, just that something will be written about you before you leave this earth. He says that if those things that were written of Christ were to be written, if they were done, what be written, he says they would feel the whole earth. There were many. You, those books will feel even like on it and go past the street. That means John is not looking at the 19 miracles recorded in all the Gospels. And neither is he looking on the things that were done while they saw and beheld the man for the 33 years he had on us. John saw a more perfect ministry. That means that the revelation, the meditation of John pertaining Christ if John was just given a pen and they told him, write Christ, he would feel the earth. That's how much the man knew God. That's how much the Spirit of God revealed unto this man. That's how much. Because if, if it tells you, there are also many other things which Jesus did and that which if they should be written everyone, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that should be written. But you see, many Christians don't ask themselves, what were those things which Jesus did? That are not in the miracles John saw. 
But John beholding those things would require you to feel the earth. To a point where the earth cannot even contain right. And then after, he says, and this you shall do. And greater works. Because I go to the Father. Do you realize that you're supposed to be everywhere in the world? You're that epistle known and read by all men. Do this thing that he says you're a city on a hill. You cannot be hid. He means that because of this message in your spirit, even Barack Obama knows you. Even the Al-Sabab guy, he knows you. Saudi Arabia knows you. By the time you enter Saudi Arabia, you don't enter like a stranger. You enter as one they know. And he says, greater works shall you do. Serve your occasion. Serve your occasion. Greater works you do. He said, serve your occasion. Now we are past the excitement of believing whether the men will we have believed they do. Let's get past that level. How have you written? Or oh, how much has been written of you? Yet. I mean, a man walks with the Spirit for two days. Just a few days. A few. At the Spirit. A few days. And when they behold him, they say, these are the ones who turn the world upside down. I mean, they are just a few days with the Holy Ghost, but they can get the world and, 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 and so as though they are working with an atlas on their bench or desk. They are turning the world upside down. You're worse. You're worse. Oh, Paul says, the depth of the richness of the wisdom of God. It's too deep. How? Listen. Now, that's why I no longer want to have the experiences of reading only the things Jesus did according to what I only read. I want to get to a point where I understand John's meditation. Because what do you think John thinks when he looks at the average Christian who is still struggling to say, I'm in the name of Jesus, I can't fall sick. They are past that level. They are past that level. He, he knows the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Nothing that is made was made without him. This thing you say in the beginning, the word was God. Even this coward in the 13th chapter called and the man says he said, and I just gave men God. That's enough to heal a sick man. That's why the last guy you had on radio who walked, he was sleeping while our someone was going on radio. And his bones got in order. He, he didn't need to be awake. He did not. Listen, God wants to do something in you. Why? You don't even seek the permission of somebody's face. Even if he says, I don't want in the name of Jesus. You can't. I can't. It can't happen. That's the day you do it. I tell him, I don't even need your faith. Ha <laughs> ha. Mrs. Bukenya is my friend. Is my friend. She can testify. There's a lady one time who came in the meetings when I was preaching in our meetings. She had a very bad, I mean, very twisted uncle, me. And then I prayed for her the first time. And then I told her, you still feel pain? She said, I feel pain. I laid hands second time. She said, I still feel pain. And then the Spirit of the Lord told me, how faith is disturbing your faith. Mrs. Bukenya is my witness. I told her, don't pray, don't believe, don't do anything. And she says, okay. She just looked at me. I touched it the third time and she walked. So some people, when you pray with them, they just disturb your faith. Look, lock the door. And tell them, get out. If you, if you want to raise a dead man, don't, don't ask them to come and have communal. Listen. That's why the dead men don't raise. Because you want six people. Look, tell them, just give me two minutes with the pastor. Alone. Get them out of the room. Lock it. Why? Say now you, brother. I'm not joking. Those ones want me, I have faith. I told people the lady called Nakawa. They prayed for her. And 
Still, I couldn't get anything out. She was mad, total mad. I get there, I tell her, Can you leave me alone with her? She said, I have a good idea. Let me enter the room. She was mad. Enter the room, lock the door. Boom. Told her now. I mean, told the demons now. I don't think we are going to go through the whole process of fire. Go, what, what? I think you know what to do, don't you? We were two in the room. The demon told me, okay, we are good. From that day, Nakawune is sober. She's preaching in Kawim. But some of you, you want corporate faith. <laughs> what you have inside you is enough. In the name of Jesus. When I understood that day that the meditations of John could fill this earth with books, I realized that certain men have not meditated. Or if did they know God, they have not known a certain depth of God. That's why some can't even preach one sermon a year. Yet they are born again and they are speaking in tongues. And it says, when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, you shall be witnesses. Some of you don't have the Holy Spirit. You have something else. It also has tongues. He says, this to receive a Jesus. We never preached a gospel that was not given and a spirit that was not sent. He says, you buried yourself. Stop, you're okay. You're free to be the richest man in the world. Listen, if, if another Christian has claimed that right, God will split the world 20 times and provide for your vision. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. That's what made him sleep in a manger. Because he had promised Ananias that you will not die until you see the salvation of Israel. But, but Ananias is in Bethlehem. And there is no room. But he promised Ananias. At least you would rather get born in a manger with cows. Ooh, why? He promised old Ananias. Ananias won't walk 500 kilometers looking for the promise. No. He had to put it next door. That's how desperate God is. You understand it? If it means for him to pass through Chibuli to get to you, he will get there. If it means for him to break the Sabbath to heal you, he will heal you. I mean, God will break the law to preach, to teach Mary at the feet. Yet it was not allowed for a Jewish woman to sit at the feet of a rabbi. And he breaks the rule and teaches her. And matter who is obeying the law is troubled. Jesus tells her you are troubled with many a thing. Verse 1, I'm trying to tell you. God loves you enough to break any rule to get to you. He will break any rule to give you that car you want, to give you that business you want, to give you that ministry you want, to give you that marriage you want. He will break every bank to build a church I see. Tell your neighbor this thing is working in me. It's working in me. It must work. You must be a success. You must be above and not beneath. You must be the head. Come on, somebody, raise your hands and speak in other tongues. Shalabatala kalalabarati. He will sleep in a manger for that. He will sleep hungry for that. He will make a man lose appetite for you. He will make a man lose sleep to bless you. He will make a man lose his money to uplift you. He will make a man lose his job to honor you. Could you undo 
a child of God. Even if you don't have faith. I have enough faith. If you don't. If you don't, your neighbor has enough faith to get you out of that chair, to get you out of that situation, to get you out of that circumstance, to get you out of that joke, to get you out of that funny relationship, to get you out of that struggle. In the name of Jesus. I want you to give the Lord a mighty Come on, somebody. Tell my people I'm serving my occasion. Tell my people I'm serving my occasion. Tell somebody in front of you, tell them I'm serving my occasion. Tell somebody behind you, I'm serving my occasion. I'm feeling the world. I'm going to see us. I'm changing nations. I'm healing the sick. I'm raising dead. I'm, I'm doing great things. In the name of Jesus, it's working. Last week, last week, when we were having a drink with the pastors, a young man called me and told me he went to an ATM that did not have money. He didn't have money on his account. And he told him, bring money. And he brought money. The only challenge is he asked for only 100,000. I wish he asked for millions. You didn't know that at that particular point, occasion served you. Listen, you're walking out of this building with that occasion serving you. You're entering your house with occasion serving you. You're waking up tomorrow with a served occasion. You're, you're going to work tomorrow, occasion serving you. You're going to sleep in your bed, occasion serving you. You're meeting that lecturer, occasion serving you. You're meeting your husband tonight with occasion serving you. Even if he has not been listening, tell him this time he will listen. If your wife has not been listening, tell her this time she will listen. If your father has not been listening, tell him this time he will listen. If your body has been stubborn, tell him this time it will hear. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.